In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our online Mass from St. Patrick's Church Hill for Tuesday in the twelfth week in Ordinary Time. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians, sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Tell this to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God on whom you are relying deceive you, when he says, Jerusalem shall not fall into the power of the king of Assyria. You have learnt by now what the kings of Assyria have done in every country, putting them all under the ban. Are you likely to be spared? Hezekiah took the letter from the hands of the messenger and read it. He then went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah said this prayer in the presence of the Lord. Lord of hosts, God of Israel, enthroned on the cherubs, you alone are God of all the kingdoms of the earth, and you made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, who was sent to insult the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have exterminated all the nations. They have thrown their gods on the fire, for these were not gods but works of men's hands, wood and stone, and hence they have destroyed them. But now, Lord of our God, save us from his hand. I pray you and let all the kingdoms of the earth know that you alone are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah. The Lord, the God of Israel, he said, says this. I have heard the prayer you have addressed to me about Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Here is the oracle that the Lord has pronounced against him. She despises you, she scorns you, the virgin daughter of Zion. She tosses her head behind you, the daughter of Jerusalem. A remnant shall go out from Jerusalem and survivors from Mount Zion. The jealous love of the Lord of hosts shall accomplish this. This then is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city. He will let fly no arrow against it confront it with no shield, throw up no earth wall against it. But the, word, the road that he came on, he will return. He shall not enter this city. It is the Lord who speaks. I will protect this city and save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. That same night, the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. Sennacherib struck camp and left. He returned home 
and stayed in Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king city. God in the midst of its citadels has shown himself its stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O God, we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches to the ends of the earth. God, God upholds his city forever. We welcome our gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Our reading is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls in front of pigs, or they may trample them, and then turn on you and tear you to pieces. So always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That is the meaning of the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, since the road that leads to perdition is wide and spacious, and many take it, but it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Our first reading today comes from the Old Testament second book of the Kings, and it's a story encouraging us to trust in God. Hezekiah, the king of Judah, receives a menacing message from a rival, Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians, who's laying siege to Jerusalem. Sennacherib tells Hezekiah that he's delusional if he's relying on God for protection from the might of the Assyrians. Rather than losing faith in God, Hezekiah goes to the temple and prays to God for protection from the Assyrians. Isaiah the prophet then appears and reassures Hezekiah that God has heard his prayer. That night we're told the angel of the Lord strikes down 185,000 of Sennacherib's soldiers and Sennacherib sensibly retreats and calls off the attack on Jerusalem. As we might, as we might suspect, this is not a historically accurate account as we might understand history. We're not required to accept that an angel of God killed off exactly 185,000 Assyrians and that someone was there with a clipboard to tally up the number of dead soldiers. Instead, our take from this is that Hezekiah is presented to us as an example of someone who places his trust in God and is not disappointed. We know from our life experience that trusting in God doesn't spare us from suffering and anxiety in this life. But we do believe in the ultimate triumph of good over evil and life over death. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in him.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord's name. For our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may become co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, world. have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace. Thanks.